Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com, and today we're going to take a look at the beautiful new three-rail O-scale Milwaukee Road 18-inch aluminum passenger cars from Lionel. Lionel cataloged these cars back in 2011, but it would be a couple of years before they actually made them, and they finally started shipping toward the end of 2013. Now, they made six cars which were sold in two sets, a set of four and a set of two. The four-pack includes the baggage car, two coach cars, and an observation car. And then the two-pack includes a dining car and a dome car. Now, they are pretty expensive. The four-pack runs about $640. The two-pack runs about $320. So altogether, you're spending almost $1,000 on six passenger cars. But that's because they are made from extruded aluminum. So they are very high quality, but they also have a big price tag. Now, on a personal note, I'm really happy to finally have these cars in my collection because when they were cataloged back in 2011, in the very same catalog, Lionel offered the beautiful and now highly sought after Milwaukee Road S3 Northern. The S3 shipped out pretty quickly and I've had it in my collection for a couple years. I did a review on it a while back. You can find that review on my YouTube channel. But up until now, I haven't had any passenger cars to pull behind it. So I'm really glad to finally have some beautiful passenger cars to put behind that gorgeous S3. And I'll also be able to pull these cars behind my more recently added Lionel Milwaukee Road F7s. And I will put these cars behind both of those engines at the end of this video. So what we're going to do now is take a closer look at each one of these cars and I'll point out some of the details and so forth. And then after that, I'll share some closing thoughts that I have about these cars. And then we'll wrap things up by taking these things for a spin around the layout. Here's a car we've been looking at pretty much the whole time so far. This is the baggage car. And while we're looking at this car, I'll go ahead and talk about the features that are common on all of these cars. On each car, you'll find nicely detailed die-cast metal sprung trucks and couplers. The underframe detailing on each car is very nice. The body of each car is made from extruded aluminum, and then the ends of each car, the doors and the panels and so forth, are made of plastic. All of the grab irons and ladders are made from separately applied pieces of metal. The interior of each car is illuminated, and then on the bottom of each car you'll find a toggle switch that allows you to turn the lighting on and off as you desire. On the ends of each car, there's a soft rubber diaphragm with a plastic gasket on the end. And then around the diaphragm, we've got some nice add-on details. And the door on the ends of each car opens up like that. Now, as for the baggage car, there are four doors, two on each side. And each of the doors slides open like that. The interior of the baggage car is actually pretty detailed. I can't get a camera in there. But if you were to take a look inside, you would see luggage racks, lockers... In the middle of the car, there's a little office set up for RPO operations, and there's even a bathroom with a sink and a toilet. Up next, we've got a coach car. The name on this car is the St. Paul Pass. There's a door on either side of one end of the car. Now, these doors don't open up like the doors on the ends of the car do, but the doors are nicely cast in, and each one features a nice porthole window and separately applied grab irons on either side. As you can see, the interior of the car is very nicely done. We've got a bunch of seats with a bunch of passengers in them, and although you can't see it very well with the camera, on either end of the car, there's a nicely detailed bathroom. The next car is also a coach car. The name on the car is Lake Pepin. Now, I'm not from Minnesota, so I hope that's how it's pronounced. And this car is pretty much identical to the St. Paul Pass car. Moving on, the next car is a dining car. This car does not have a name on it. I'm not sure why, but if we look on the inside, you can see it's pretty nicely done. There's a bunch of people sitting around at tables, presumably eating. The only negative thing I have to say about this car is that on one half of the car, which I'm guessing would be the kitchen, there's nothing. It's just empty. And I think it would have been really cool if they had put a kitchen in there, but they didn't. It's not that big of a deal, but I did want to point it out. And at some point in the future, I may go in there and add a kitchen myself. Up next, we've got the beautiful dome car, which is appropriately named the Super Dome. The interior detailing is excellent. On the bottom level, we've got some people sitting around tables and so forth. And then up top, we've got some passengers checking out the scenery. And a nice touch is that there are two sets of stairs connecting the two levels. 
Finally, we come to the last and probably most beautiful car of them all, the observation car. The name of the car is Cedar Rapids. Just like some of the other cars, we've got two cast-in doors on one end. The interior detailing is fantastic, as you can see. We've got lots of people hanging out, and we've also got two nicely detailed bathrooms. And then we've got the glass sky top end of the car, which is absolutely gorgeous. There's lots of people hanging out down there. We've got a red LED drum head on the end of the car. And then on the underside of the end of the car, there's a dummy scale coupler, which is a nice touch. Here's a quick look at the underside of one of these cars. You can see we've got nice detailing on the underside here. There are two pickup rollers, one per truck. And then here's the on off switch for the lights that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so I'm just about ready to take these cars for a spin around the layout, but before I do that, I did want to share a couple final thoughts with you. First of all, almost immediately after I bought these cars, I went ahead and converted all six cars to LED lighting. Out of the box, these cars have soft yellow incandescent lighting, and I've swapped that out for soft yellow LED lighting. Now, if I didn't tell you that, you probably wouldn't notice because the soft yellow LED lighting is almost a perfect match for the soft yellow incandescent lighting that these cars had when I bought them. But I did want to put it out there. Now, when I convert my passenger cars to LED lighting, I use LED strips that I buy from a guy named Jack Pierce up in Ontario, Canada. His contact information is at the bottom of the screen. And he makes these really high quality LED strips that are the perfect size to fit into most 18 inch passenger cars. You can get them either with white lighting or soft yellow lighting. And I've really come to like them for a few reasons. First of all, the strips are plug and play. All you have to do is put them in the car, hook them up to track power, and they're ready to go. They also come with capacitors on them so that you don't get that god awful flickering like you get with incandescent lighting. Also, you can resize the strips. If they're too long for your particular car, you can cut them down to size. And also, the strips have auxiliary outputs, so you can hook on extra LEDs if you want for lighting up things like marker lights or the drum head on the end of the observation car and stuff like that. Now, I've mentioned this before, but I know a lot of you guys would like to see me do a tutorial video showing how to convert a passenger car to LED lighting. And I am planning on doing such a video, but I didn't want to do that video using one of these cars because converting these particular cars to LED operation was rather difficult. It was sort of an atypical conversion in that the interior configuration of these cars made it difficult to get the LED strips installed and working properly. I was able to do it, but it just took a lot of time and it was a little bit difficult. And so that means that one of these cars would not be a good candidate to do a tutorial video with. However, MTH passenger cars are probably the easiest to convert to LED operation. And I have several MTH passenger cars in my collection that still need to be converted to LED lighting. So the next time I convert one of those cars, I will make a tutorial video out of it. The second thing I wanted to bring up is that there have been reports of some of these cars, not all of them, but some of them arriving in less than perfect condition. And mostly that's due to damage that can occur to these models during shipping. Most of the problems that people have experienced have been minor, but a few have arrived with more serious damage. Now, as for myself, I did experience some minor issues with a couple of these cars when I got them out of the box. On one of the cars, a passenger figure had come loose, so I had to open the car up and re-glue him to his seat. And then on another car, a wire on one of the trucks had come loose, and I had to reattach it. I really don't have an issue with any minor problems that need to be fixed when I buy a model. I like working on my trains, and I actually enjoy fixing minor problems when they crop up. And I think that most of the people in this hobby probably feel the same way. Now, of course, if there's severe damage to a car, such as paint damage or body damage, then you have to think about exchanging the cars or sending them into Lionel for repair. But for minor issues like loose parts or bent handrails and stuff like that, I will almost always just fix it myself and move on. And you know, I actually consider it a small miracle that more of these delicate models that we buy don't end up with damage during shipping. Because if you think about it, by the time any model you buy gets to your front door, it's probably been through three or four different modes of transportation. It's definitely been on a boat. It's definitely been on a truck. And it's probably been on a train or a plane or both. So while in a perfect world, it'd be great if everything showed up in perfect shape, the fact is that these things go on such a long journey to get to us and they're so delicate 
that it's inevitable that from time to time you're going to have some parts come loose and so forth. So I really don't think it's that big of a deal, but I did want to bring it up since there have been some damage reports floating around about these cars. Okay, we're ready to take the cars for a spin around the layout. I'm going to start things off by pulling the cars behind the Lionel Milwaukee Road number 261 S3 Northern that I mentioned earlier. And once again, I already did a review on this engine a while back, so if you haven't seen it, I would recommend watching it. You can find it on my YouTube channel. This is a fantastic engine. And then after that, I will switch it out and pull these cars behind a set of Lionel Milwaukee Road F7s. Now, I haven't reviewed the F7s yet, but I will be reviewing those at some point in the future. So let's go ahead and move it out. Okay, now I'm going to pull the cars behind these Lionel Milwaukee Road F7s. So let's go ahead and move it out.
Okay, that about wraps it up for this review. These are absolutely gorgeous passenger cars from Lionel, and they're sure to please any fan of the Milwaukee Road. Now, if you're interested in purchasing these, you may want to do that sooner rather than later, because these are highly sought after, and as time goes on, they are getting more and more difficult to find. Now, as I said, they are rather expensive. The four-pack which again consists of the baggage car, two coach cars, and the observation car, retails for just under $640. And the two-pack, which consists of the dome car and the dining car, retails for just under $320. And of course, you can probably get a little bit of a discount off that retail price if you go through a good Lionel dealer. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www.legacystation.com or better yet, give them a call at 770-339-7780. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.